walnut bread. So we're going to start with wet ingredients and we're going to stir in some dry ingredients and then we're going to mix the two together. So I have a cup of sour cream, I have three eggs, four teaspoons of vanilla, and a quarter cup of cold water. We are going to just stir that together, break up the egg yolks. There we go. It doesn't need to be perfect, just enough that the eggs are broken apart. Then we're going to go to our dry ingredients. Um, I'm going to use the mixer, so we're going to start with our mixing bowl. I have five cups of flour to start with. If we need more, we can add it, but we're going to start with five cups. A um, half a cup of sugar, plain white sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and then one envelope of rapid rise yeast. We're just going to stir that together. And then we're going to add all of this in here and then head to the mixer. So we're going to use our pat, um, dough hook attachment. There we go. And we're going to mix this for about six minutes or until it becomes elastic. Start on low, build up. necessary. That's an elastic dough right there. So now what I need to do is add some butter. I have 16 tablespoons of butter that is cut into pieces and softened. So we're just going to add that to here about four pieces at a time and mix it up. And if necessary you can scrape the butter from the side. It's going to need to go at a low speed like this, um, we'll move it up to medium, but for about 15 minutes. And then if the dough gets too sticky and too wet, we'll have to add some more flour. There are our 16 tablespoons. Alright. So I'm going to set this for 5 minutes to start, move it up to medium, and we'll revisit in 5 minutes and see where we are. So our five minutes are up, I've come in and there's some butter still stuck to the side, so we're going to slide that down to get it incorporated and turn the mixer on for another five minutes and come back and check. So it's been another five minutes and if you can see, it's still a little sticky. So we're going to do it another five minutes and see if it'll come straight off of the hook without any prompting. If not, we're going to add a little bit more flour. All right, we're ready to go. Uh, and we don't need to add any more flour to this dough. If you look, it's sticky, but it's not wet. And that's really what we're looking for is just the sticky dough. And see how it just pulls away from that. Now we're gonna put it in a greased bowl and then put it in the refrigerator. Uh, it needs to be refrigerated for at least 10 hours, but up to 24. 
Now we're going to make our filling for our walnut bread. I'm gonna have eight tablespoons or a stick of butter that I've melted and it's gonna cool. And then I'm gonna chop up some walnuts. They don't have to be tiny chops. It's kind of a coarse, you wanna have chunks of walnut, but we don't want whole walnuts because that's a lot inside of a piece of bread for someone to eat. So we're just gonna put a handful at a time. And just give them a coarse chop. And that's good. And you need a cup, so. All right, so there we go with our walnuts. To that, we're gonna add two teaspoons of cinnamon and a cup and a half of dark brown sugar. I like dark brown sugar just because I like the molasses and the caramel flavor that you get. Um, I have discovered that the molasses content that you get in light brown sugar is almost non-existent. So I cook with a lot of dark brown sugar now. I'm going to mix all this up. And then this particular customer wants raisins. So we're going to add our raisins in now. This is going to make two loaves of bread. We're going to use a cup of raisins. So now that all that is mixed, there's a cup. Now we're gonna roll out our bread. Okay, so the next step in our walnut bread is gonna to be to grease our pans. I'm just gonna spray a little bit of grease on there. And then walnut bread is sticky, um, and the filling in it oozes out. So I'm gonna create a bread sling. This is just a piece of, piece of parchment paper that we're going to put inside. It is going to hang off the sides so that when the bread is done, you can lift the parchment paper up and the bread will come right out. And we're going to spray that a little too just to be on the safe side. All right, the next step is going to be to roll out our bread. Here is our beautiful dough that has been chilling in the refrigerator overnight. We have a lightly floured surface. Okay, that's a little more than lightly floured. I got a little carried away. Let's move some flour off to the side. What we're going to do is roll this into a big rectangle. So the way I make walnut bread is very similar to the way I make cinnamon rolls in that we're going to roll it into one giant rectangle. We're going to put the filling in. We're going to roll it up. We're going to cut it into what look like rolls. And then we're going to stack them in a loaf pan. And during the baking process, those uh, the, the breading will adhere together. And so it'll come out like one big loaf of bread, but with a really awesome walnut filling. All right, so now we're going to take our walnut filling, and just pour it in. I pour it all in at once and then spread it out on my own. So I can get a good idea of where everything is. <laughs> you want to leave about an inch around the edges where there's nothing so that there's a way for us to pinch and roll. All right. So now I'm going to take the outer edge roll up just a little. We're going to get a really tight roll on this. And not to worry if the dough sticks. 
grab a little of that extra flour you have. Because the next part of this, so now that I have the giant roll, we're going to thin it out. You want it to be longer. So I'm going to take some flour, rub it over the top, flip it over, and just mold it to the, to the center shape that we want. And now that we have it like this, we're going to cut it into about 24, no, 32 even pieces. And then we're going to make two rows in our loaf pan. So we'll start here. about a half an inch thick. with the two loaves, we're going to cover them up and then let them rise for about two hours before we make our glaze and then we bake. So I finished cutting up and arranging the slices of the walnut bread. Now I'm going to slightly spray it with a little bit of Pam or vegetable spray and then we're going to cover it with saran wrap and let it rise for two hours. Okay, so our bread has had two hours to rise, and it looks really pretty. So now we're gonna make the wash. All it is is a basic egg wash, which is one egg and two tablespoons of water, which we are going to whisk together. This is gonna help it brown on the top and get that nice golden crust. Then we take our regular old pastry brush, we're going to brush the top of the bread. And then we are going to sprinkle it with some cinnamon sugar. And you want to make sure that you get all the sides of the egg. But you may not use all of the egg wash if you don't need to. There's no reason to add scrambled eggs to the top of your bread. Just make sure that you get that crust on the top. So we're going to take our cinnamon sugar. You can make it right then. I have always have a shaker on hand because we like cinnamon sugar in this house. Liberally sprinkle the top. And then we're going to put it in a 450 degree oven. Now, one of the things about my walnut bread is I like a, a dark crust and I like this steam, um, the the hard crust on the outside and a soft bread on the inside. So I started at 450 degrees, but as soon as I put the bread in, I reduce it to 350. It's going to bake for an hour, but that steam created by lowering the temperature immediately is going to create that nice golden crust on the outside. Our walnut bread is finished out of the oven, and so now we're going to use that sling we made with parchment paper to just lift the bread right out of the pan, and it's ready to serve.